What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. Before we get into anything today, I do want to let you guys know that we are going to be live streaming tomorrow night to watch the Red Sox take on the Tampa Bay Rays, but it's going to be a little bit earlier than usual. The game's starting at 6.40 p.m. Eastern time, so I'm going to be live on this channel at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you haven't been to one of these yet, they are a ton of fun. Regardless of how this Red Sox season is going, regardless of if they win or if they lose, we have a ton of fun on these live streams, and I highly recommend you guys stopping on by. So again, that is 6.30 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, Wednesday, to watch the Red Sox take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Anyways, we've got some big news to talk about today. In terms of this 2023 season, it seems like the topic throughout the entire year has been uncertainty. Uncertainty of guys coming back for the future, uncertainty of where this team's going. In fact, the only extension talk we've talked about this entire year has either been rumors or Garrett Whitlock, because that was the only extension we've had this year was Garrett Whitlock's. Well, today that change in the Red Sox decided last night that they were gonna extend another Red Sox player. So that's what we're talking about today. We are talking about who that player is, what this extension means to them, what this extension means to the current Red Sox, what this extension means for the future of the Boston Red Sox, especially going into 2023. But before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well, helps out a ton, would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. I'm assuming you guys already know who I'm gonna be talking about in this video, but in case you did, couldn't tell by the thumbnail or the title of this video, the Red Sox and Kike Hernandez came together and they agreed on a contract extension. That extension was a one year, $10 million deal that I actually think was great for both sides. If we're talking in terms of Kike's side of things, Kike, I understand completely why Kike would wanna take this deal. Obviously he could have probably gone to free agency and looked for a multi-year deal somewhere he could kind of settle down a little bit and be assured that he's going to be there for a couple of years but with the fact that he got off to a pretty slow start to this 2022 season and the fact that he got a pretty big injury that held him out for a lot of the season would probably make getting a multi-year deal a little bit more difficult than it would have at the start of this year so if i'm kike hernandez it makes sense to take the one year 10 million dollar deal one because he loves this team he loves this manager and we will get into that more in a second but two because he can use 2023 as sort of a prove it year a year to say hey look when i'm fully healthy this is how I can contribute to a team in a long-term type deal. On top of that too, we all know his postseason resume. So taking this $10 million deal for one year, hopefully he can get a more lucrative deal at the end of 2023. So yeah, I think this deal makes sense if I'm Kike Hernandez. If I'm the Red Sox, I also think this makes sense. The Red Sox love Kike Hernandez. Alex Cora loves him. Players love him. The team loves him. And on top of all that, he's a contributing member to this team a ton, right? We know what he could do in the postseason. I don't think I have to really go into details about just how good Kike Hernandez is during the postseason. I mean, he was literally a god last year. 2022, obviously he got off to a super slow start, then got injured. But since he's come back, he's been an RBI machine. He's been hitting a lot more consistently and he looks a lot better at the plate. But maybe more importantly, on top of all of that, is he brings consistency and a gold glove defense to this Red Sox team. We saw firsthand what this team looks like without Kike Hernandez in center field. I love Jaron Duran, and I actually do think there's still a ton of potential for Jaron Duran there, but we truly saw what Kike's defense does for this team in his absence. He's also a great clubhouse guy. I think sometimes clubhouse personalities and chemistry on a team get overlooked when you're looking at a guy's performance on the field and going deep into analytics, but in baseball, chemistry is so important. Because of how long the season is, you need guys who can keep this team together and keep this team positive, both on the field and off the field consistently. And Kike Hernandez has proven he's that guy. He's one of Alex Cora's good friends. He's a very strong personality in that clubhouse and people in that clubhouse absolutely love Kike Hernandez. So for the Red Sox to bring him back, they're not only bringing back a guy who can contribute at the plate, both in, during the season and especially in the postseason slash late season, but they're also bringing back a guy who's a great center fielder. He's a great defensive player in general. He's great at every position, but he truly does excel in center field. And they're bringing back a guy who's a huge clubhouse presence. And that is huge for this Red Sox team, both in 2022, because finally we get some assurance on some of these guys and in 2023, because there are probably going to be some new faces on this Red Sox team. So to have a guy who's kind of a glue for everyone is huge. Finally, in terms of the front office, hopefully this is a good sign. Like I said, at the beginning of this video, this entire postseason is going 
going to be filled with uncertainty. This entire year has been filled with uncertainty. So for the front office to go out and be proactive in re-signing a player, yes, $10 million in the grand scheme of things isn't exactly a huge contract, but hopefully it's a step in the right direction. It's also a good sign because Kike Hernandez, again, hasn't had the best year. When he went down on the IL, he was hitting just 200. He was on the IL for a long time. This is a pretty decent sized contract for a guy who really hasn't contributed to this team a ton this year. And again, hopefully that's a good sign that the Red Sox are going to open up their pocketbooks and say, hey, we're going to put together a competitive team for 2023. And I think Kike Hernandez is a good start to that. Obviously, you've got a lot of work to do. You've got a lot of holes to fill. You've got Michael Waka, who I think a lot of people, including myself, want to see back in a Red Sox uniform for 2023. Obviously, you have Xander Bogart, who set another Red Sox record last night and who joins a pretty elusive club of guys who have hit nine straight games and all of them being multi-hit. I believe it was only 55 in all of baseball. That's a pretty elusive club. You have Devers, who you want to get signed before he enters free agency, possibly Nate Valdi. You've got all the bullpen work, but this is a huge step in the right direction, in my opinion, for the front office. You had such a hole in the outfield. Only Verdugo was solidified for 2023. So to get Kike back into 2023, again, in my opinion, is a good sign for things to come, but I could be wrong. So in the comment section down below, let me know what you think of this extension. Let me know what you think of Kike. Do you like this? Do you not like it? Do you think there should have been more? Do you think there should have been less? What are your thoughts on this actual contract? What are your thoughts on what this means for this Red Sox team? Do you think it's a good sign? Do you think it's a bad sign? Do you think it just doesn't mean anything at all? Let me know all your thoughts on this deal down below. As always, if you've made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like I said at the beginning, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Plus, you made it to the end of this video, you might as well hit that sub button. You also might as well hit that like button as well. Like I said, again, at the beginning, helps these videos out a ton and would mean a lot to me. One more thing, if you truly enjoy this video, share with a friend or family member who loves the Red Sox as much as you do so they can stay up to date on Red Sox extensions as well. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one and I will see you in the red seats.